Welcome along guys and welcome back to the garage. Yes, this is a build series and we're not starting it in the garage. We are outside with my beautiful SMCR. Yes, I have now purchased this machine. It is all mine. The reason I've come out is before when I've done the other build series is I've made a mistake of not doing enough video of the bike for a before and after. I'm not making that mistake again. So I've come out, I've risked the freezing weather. It's about two degrees today. I'm gonna to do some video of this bike now, talk you through how this bike is at the moment. It's not completely standard. It's got some power parts bits on it, but I've got a lot of plans for this machine. It is gonna be absolutely incredible. But before we get into all that, let's take a look at the before. Chopsy, roll the intro. So before we get into all the good stuff, here she is. Here's the SMCR standard. Well, I say standard, it's got some power for, power farts, power farts, power parts bits on it. It's got the Akropovich, the standard street line Akropovich. It's nice, it's not brilliant, it's a bit big, it's a bit too quiet. We want better. It's got what well, what this bike has got, which is fantastic, it has got the WP spring upgrades all this bike has been re-sprung to suit my weight so this is one of the reasons for buying this bike because it's all set up and sprung for my weight so it's got uprated springs because i'm a bit of a fatty i've got a few bits of bling on this but she's more or less stock it's got some other trinkets the akropovich heat shield down here the ktm standard uh, you know a bit of bling on the brake reservoir but nothing on the clutch a big one it's got is the power part seat so it's got the more comfortable power parts seat. So I may change that, not sure. We've got a bit more bling in the shape of the rear reservoir cover. But apart from that, it really is stock. She is bone stock standard. Back in the garage at last. Enough of that outside business. It's way too cold out there. Let's stay indoors. <laughs> so the SMCR, I've got a whole host of bits and pieces to put on this machine. I've got more stuff to come. As I say, I want a full system to go on this. I've got all sorts of bits and bobs. Hang on a minute. It's probably easy for me just to, just to show you. Have a look at this. Did I mention I've done the back in as well? Oh, it's not good. So first of all, we've got the full Rottweiler airbox kit for the 690. Now I had one of these on my 1290 Super Duke. It made a massive difference to the pickup of the bike. These, these give the bike so much more torque lower down the rev range. And that's one thing I've found with the 690. It's a little bit asthmatic below sort of 3000 revs. So I'm hoping this is gonna produce the torque low down. It's gonna also give it a bit more top end. I'm really looking forward to see what power we can get out with the Rottweiler. To go with the Rotti kit, of course, you need a power commander because it changes all the fueling significantly. So you need a power commander to put a bit more fuel in where it will be lacking. Where we get an extra air, we then need extra fuel to compensate. So we've got a Dynajet PC5 to go on. Oh, my back. I've got a bad back, did I say? As well as the Rotti intake, we've also got the Rottweiler air emission delete thing. Uh, let me show you. If you look at the bike, it's got this huge, great catch tank, and that's all part of that system. So it basically gets rid of all of this junk, <laughs> for want of a better word, all of this tank, all of this sort of pipe work that feeds around the engine into the crankcase, all that gets binned off, saves a bit of weight, and it's just gone. You haven't got to look at big ugly things like that on the bike, because that really is, uh, is rather disgusting. Oh, yeah, yeah, the environment, yeah, I know. Also, one of my big criticisms with the 690, if you watch my end of season review video, if you didn't, link at the top, was it doesn't have any rev counter. No rev counter, just the instrumentation is really lacking on the bike. So this is a extra 
instrument cluster really. This is made by a company called Veritech. It's about 120 euros and this basically gives you a rev counter for the bike. It gives you also engine temperature and outside air temperature and lots of other little features. You can see this is how it looks. You know, you've got a, you've got a rev gauge and a digital display and a shift light. You know, and it, it's, I'm really looking forward to trying this out. So this is something else which is going on as part of the build. This is the Barotech Cockpit Assistant. I'll put links to everything in the description for the stuff I'm putting on the bike, but that should be good. Looking forward to installing that. Another thing I'm really rather excited about is this. This is an LED headlight to go on the bike. So rather than have, you know, it's, it's 2020 for heaven's sake, nearly 2021. The bike's still got like a halogen bulb as a headlight. I don't want that. I want to give it more of a modern look. So this is from those crazy Dutch hooligans, the Super Mofuls. That's the standard one. You can just see how much better that's going to look and how much more modern the bike's going to look with that on. Oh yeah, spring it on. It's from these guys, if you've not heard of them, the Super Mofuls. Absolutely brilliant content. Quite a big YouTube channel, been going for years. They do some fantastic edits, absolute hooligans on super motos, basically. <laughs> and Crash King's got a 690 SMCR, which looks amazing. My, my bike's a bit inspired by his, really. But if, you, if you're not already subscribed, go and check out Super Mofuls. As if all that wasn't enough, we've also got this absolutely gorgeous anodized billet parts from SM Project. I've got more or less the full set of the billet items here. So we've got the, uh, I think that goes on the uh, fuel filter or fuel filter, oil filter cover, front sprocket cover, oil pump cover, front uh, spools, crash protection, rear axle sliders with the spools as well, front top clamp also takes a GoPro attachment on that as well and then their brake and clutch reservoirs as well. So absolutely gorgeous, that stuff. I mean, that the quality of this is absolutely incredible. And full billet, then anodized, and then, you know, the, the details just milled out again after the anodizing. Absolutely beautiful. SM Project, that is just a bling-a-ding-a-ding-dong. Exciting news, just had a delivery. I was just about to get the spanners out and then I've had a delivery turn up. So we're gonna see what's in the box. Something else exciting for the bike, I bet. It's like Christmas. Yeah, it is Christmas. Oh, what have we got in here then? Oh, it's a piece of carbon fiber from those wonderful people at P3 Carbon. Look at that beauty. Absolutely beautiful. Bike is desperate for some sort of uh, protection underneath. Gets quite a few stone chips on the uh, on the bottom of the engine. So P3 carbon fiber belly pan sump guard, I guess. I wanted one of these for bloody ages. Oh, so without further delays, let me get this kit off. Hmm. Bag everything, bag and tag. What I'm gonna do, as you never can tell with one of my projects, how long they're gonna last. I'm gonna bag up all the parts as I remove them. The front piece of plastic, I believe, pops on. I'm doubting myself now. I'm sure this bit pops on. Ish. Yeah, wanted to go up chops really. <laughs> it's off now. This side already off. Oh, that's tighty. In the bag. Okay, got that tail off. One job leads to another. Oh, back's going already. That's all the bolts out and still things won't come apart. Ugh. There we go, little sky that clips in there big time. So this piece was clipped under here, but there's one more bolt which holds this on. So I might as well just take all the bodywork off 
this bike because the plan will be is to probably crispy designs is going to do me a custom graphics kit for this bike custom lcr graphics kit so take all the panels off they're going to need to be wrapped anyway <laughs> rapper dapper ding dongs what are you talking about i don't know okay okay put the fuel back on because it's starting to smell i'll zip tie it up so we're not got the wiring under pressure I know what you're going to be saying, oh, you get strain on that chap. Just put a zip tie through this to support it so it's not just resting on the wiring. Right, so that is the back of the bike stripped. So I think this is obviously the fuel tank on these. It's got like a composite fuel tank on the SMCRs. So that's that done at the back. I think we're just we take off these i think we take off all this as well might as well fully strip it strip it right down back to its bare bones let's do it let's fall in love how's this held on i see i got gotcha. you i got gotcha. you one there two at the front by the look of it before we go any further i'll just mark up these as being body work for the rear, so let's call it uh, body rear. I should have been a doctor for that handwriting. That's all the hypermotard bolts in here, so I must not mix up. <laughs> Super, I better put SM, hang on. I better put SMCR on here before we get ourselves in the right mess. SMCR, so we know at least what bike we're talking about. So the last piece of the bodywork puzzle, let's take the front cowl off. How do you do that? One there. Ah, it's my fingers. Come on, you little bugger. One more lurking at the top here. There we go, gotcha. So it should, in theory, lift away. And then we just have to unplug the cable, the headlight wire. Bingo, she's out of there so nice working on a bike which comes apart easily that is a damn sight easy to take apart than the hypermotard all of this here is the standard airbox and that i'm fingering it is the is the inlet to the airbox that's it that's your air getting into your airbox it's just through this tiny little tract and it goes up through here and down into the filter inside so to fit the rottweiler kit all of that is getting out of there all of that's getting junked the Rottweiler kit will sit then directly onto the inlet manifold, onto the throttle body. So the next episode we will fit, I think, the Rottweiler kit. I think we'll leave this one here now because we're going to get into the technical stuff and there's not enough time left in this video to get into the depths of the engine. The power commander needs to hook into the coil packs, the throttle position sensor, which I think is around the other side, also the crankcase position sensor. Again, it's around the other side, into the battery, which is here. All that's got to be hooked in. We've also got to hook in the uh, dashboard assistant to the crank sensor, to the battery. So that's, I think, all the electrical parts of this. We're doing one episode. But there she is, stripped and ready for action. Let's give her another finger. You dirty little sod, chops. So I think we'll call it there for this episode, guys, before we get into the real techie stuff, into the depths of removing the airbox. That's, that's going to be the next episode. So if you're interested in this, if you've got an SMCR, or you just like someone looking at someone mess about in their garage, ruining their motorcycles, subscribe to the channel. We're going to go through installation of all of this kit, the Rottweiler, the Power Commander. With the Power Commander videos, I want to go into how you actually change the maps on them, what you can see from them, because you can go in and see all the details of the fuel tables and everything. So we're going to go in, explain how the fuel tables work, explain how you load a new map onto this. Because basically what I've got, Wattweiler have provided me a map which match, matches my spec, my exhaust with the Wattweiler kit. Dynajet I've also loaded on a close map as well. So we'll take a look at the difference between those two maps. Then when this bike's complete, early next year, I'm going to take the whole bike up to Preston to Dynajet UK and we're going to do a custom map for the bike. So we'll see how close the 
generic maps are compared to having a custom map for your own bike to see what the gains are for having a full custom one. Because every bike is slightly different. Generic maps will get you 95% of the way there, but the extra 5% a custom map to make it absolutely mwah, spot on. So there we go. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time. These, these videos are going to be quite quick and frequent. There's going to be at least every week. So I want to get this bike done and I want to move on to the Ducati. So this isn't going to be dragged out for six months like the Ducati was. This is going to be snappy. There's all sorts of bits to go on. Um, there's stuff I want to get painted and perhaps Cerakoted as well, but that's all to come. Any suggestions or recommendations for kit to put on this bike? Also let me know in the comments. I love to read your comments. So give me feedback on this. Let me know what you think, what I should do, what you would do. It's always good to read. I love it. But thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. And I will see you soon. And I mean soon for episode two. See you later, guys. Oh, my back. I've got a bad back. Didn't I mention it? Done my back in.